Yep, I have yet another game to show you guys here, fully boxed and um, with an extra disc, because this actually came from Mr. Lazy Game Reviews himself, Clint Basinger, and he gave me this disc too. Now, <laughs> I have here the fully boxed copy of Lemmings. All I asked for from Clint here was the disc to this game, because I knew he had an extra one, but instead he sent me a box of it along with a whole bunch of other games too so seriously man huge thanks for all the extra stuff here but anyways let's actually look inside this thing this is one of those slip cover type boxes so you have the slip cover here but then there's also this box inside and so this will open up like that and uh yeah, I can't say I've ever seen anything like that when opening a box before. It's ex it's like cardboard something, but no, the disc is in here. Yeah, I have no idea why it's in whatever this is. But um, anyways, I got the disc there, and then the manual. And this is actually a really cool manual because it starts off by first showing you what the lemmings can do and then actually stepping you through like a sort of graphic novel of how the game plays out typically. So that's a really cool thing. Like you can learn more about how to play the game from these pages here than from the actual instructions of how to play the game and everything. <laughs> well, I guess you do have the controls over there for the keyboard shortcuts and such. And then let's see what else we got in here. We got um oh, little fold out thing here for Psygnosis games. It's probably stuff on the back. Yep. Or hang on, that's already got Lemmings 2 on it. What? Are we sure this is period specific here? Interesting. They got a whole bunch of Lemmings 2 pins there. Hmm. I'm wondering if this was actually like... Let's see what else we got here. Advanced technical details. Wait, that says Lemmings 2 on it again. What the heck? What else? Wait a minute. Lemmings 2 again! This is the original... Why is there... <laughs> okay, um... You're probably watching this, Clint, because I know you watch my show, but the contents of this box are primarily Lemmings 2 things. <laughs> the only thing that's not is this disc. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Anyways, let's actually look at this game. <laughs> So yeah, you guys are probably looking at this footage and noticing it doesn't look quite right. And you're right, this is not what the game normally looks like. In fact, here's a picture of this same level taken as a screenshot. I found out late in producing this episode that because of the weird way in which the palette is manipulated by this game, DOSBox's recording features only capture the palette correctly in the status window area and not in the gameplay area. Now this is because the palette is being changed every frame of gameplay mid-refresh, right after the main game area is drawn. Thus, the palette which is current when DOSBox records the frame is the one with the status bar looking correct. And since the codec used by DOSBox can only store one palette for each frame, that's the only part which looks right. At least the lemmings themselves look right as well, and it's still possible to see what's going on. So I decided instead of capturing all new footage with external software, I'd leave it as it is, especially since this isn't the last we're going to hear about palette issues with this game. In any case, as for the game itself, this may come as a shock to a lot of you, but I've never liked the Lemmings games, even back when they were brand new. 
Now don't get me wrong, there are tons of people who love this series, and for good reason. When this first one came out, it was extremely innovative, and to this day, few games even attempt to replicate this style of puzzle gameplay because of how distinct it is to the Lemmings brand. But I do have some issues with the overarching design of the game. Not the mechanics, those are solid. Not the gameplay itself, it works really well. The audio is good, the graphics are good, when the palette isn't messed up, and there's just a lot of minor things about the design of the game which have never really sat well with me. And as a kid, I just got bored and frustrated and gave up, thus never getting anywhere. As an adult, giving a proper analysis of this game, I'm finally able to articulate the exact reasons why I don't like playing this thing. But that's just me. There's a lot to like here, and a solid number of reasons why people who are not me would enjoy this thing. Lemmings was originally developed by DMA Design, now known as Rockstar North, the guys responsible for the Grand Theft Auto games, and was published by Psygnosis in 1991. It's a one-player action-slash-puzzle game, which is kind of misleading with the DOS version as it shows an option to adjust the number of players, but not every version of the game has two-player support, and the DOS port is one of the ones lacking it. In terms of graphics, the game supports 4-color CGA as well as 16-color Tandy, EGA, and VGA graphics, primarily running at 320x200 resolution, though the EGA and VGA modes also have a high-resolution menu system which runs at 640x350. As for audio, it supports the PC speaker, the Tandy 3 voice chip, and AdLib. While the Tandy sound is very distinct in its own way, chances are you'll be sticking with the AdLib sound. As for its current release date, it's still commercial and, much to my surprise, has not been re-released on digital download services like GOG or Steam or such. In fact, the last Lemmings game to be released was the Sony PSP version way back in 2006. And technically 2008 if you count a puzzle pack it was also a part of. So for what was such a ubiquitous game, I find it amazing that the franchise has pretty much disappeared over the past decade. Though, from what I've seen of the more modern versions, I think a big part of the why it died out may have just been the fact that they started rehashing old levels all over again instead of just making new ones. If you go searching for this original game, it's not too hard to find copies, but because it was ported to just about every console and computer you can think of, you have to be careful about getting the exact version you want, especially since the box art and contents are only subtly different between many of them. DOS copies tend to run about $10 to $15 for just the discs or the later CD release, while fully boxed copies go for between $30 and $40. Though before we move on, one simple yet relevant question I was asked by Juan Bobano for today was, how many Lemmings games for DOS are there? The answer depends on if you want to count side games and or compilations. For the main series, there's five. Lemmings, Oh No More Lemmings, Lemmings 2 The Tribes, The Lemmings Chronicles, and Lemmings 3D, which is personally the one I have the fewest issues playing. In terms of side games, there's another five. Two versions of Xmas Lemmings, two versions of Holiday Lemmings, and 3D Lemmings Winterland. If you want to count compilations, the first two main series games had one simply titled Lemmings and Oh No More Lemmings. Every Lemmings game following only came out for things other than DOS. Before you start playing, you have to choose your level set. There are several sets of levels clustered into four sets, entitled Fun, Tricky, Taxing, and Mayhem, with the later sets being harder in various ways, either by being more difficult to manage, or by having a very limited set of skills you can apply to your lemmings to win. You can also input passwords to return to points in the game without having to start over from the beginning. Before each level begins, you have a screen giving you important information about the level. Ironically, while this screen looks right here, when you're playing this game emulated, it's more likely going to look like this. Again, it has to do with how the game is doing mid-frame palette changes and with how DOSBox is handling the recording process. There is technically a way to fix this while playing, but it's not a perfect solution and we'll talk about it later. Once you get into the game itself, it couldn't be simpler. You have lemmings dropping down from the gate into the level, and you have to make a path for them to reach the exit. You do this by selecting skills from the toolbar on the bottom and assigning them to specific lemmings for them to utilize. From left to right, the skills are Climber, Floater, Blow Up, Blocker, Builder, Basher, Miner, and Digger. 
There's also plus and minus buttons for increasing or decreasing the rate at which lemmings are released into the level. Uh, pause, P-A-W-S button for pausing the game, go figure. And a nuke button for causing all lemmings still left in the level to self-destruct. Either a quick way to end if you still have blockers out there, or a means of rage quitting when you royally screw up. The climber ability permanently allows a lemming to scale vertical walls in an upwards direction, while the floater ability allows a lemming to safely fall from any height, whereas normally if they fall more than about half of the playfield height, they'll go splat. If you give a lemming both of these abilities, they're referred to as an athlete when you highlight them. That way you know both effects are active. The blow-up function ties in with the misconception of real lemmings being suicidal in nature. As you use this to set a 5 second timer on a lemming, subsequently causing them to detonate. The blast won't hurt other lemmings, but it will leave a small crater, which is something you need to be mindful of when trying to place temporary blockers. Well, speaking of, blockers will stand in place and prevent other lemmings from moving past them. You'll either set them up permanently to prevent lemmings from falling off of cliffs you don't want them to jump from, or you'll set them up temporarily to keep the horde at bay while you have a single lemming or two do all the real work. Builders will build a short little staircase at a 22 and a half degree angle. This is probably a good time to point out that the map down below is compressed horizontally by exactly half, so the levels actually stretch out twice as long as the map indicates they do. Meaning those 22 and a half degree staircases look like they're going at a 45 degree angle on the map. You'll hear three ticks before a builder runs out of supplies, and then the builder shrugs so that you know you can potentially put another builder on them and get more of a staircase out of them. Bashers, miners, and diggers are all made to tunnel through things. Bashers tunnel horizontally through the walls, miners dig downwards at an angle, while diggers dig straight down. Each of them will stop their respective activity once they hit open air. You have to be mindful of metal though, as these methods of tunneling will not work on metallic structures. Though if you really need to get through metal, you have to blast it with explosives, thus using the blow up function. Bashers also have to contend with one-way walls which have arrows pointing on them in the direction you have to be moving to bash through them successfully. And that's basically all there is to the gameplay. By using a combination of these skills, you're able to build paths for the lemmings to follow to safely reach the exit, and as long as you save enough of them within the time limit presented, you'll move on to the next level. With 120 levels to face, there's no shortage of gameplay for everyone who enjoys it. But now let's talk about the minor issues which keep me from enjoying this thing. My first issue is that a large quantity of levels come down to just waiting on builders to do their thing, since they're very slow and if you want them to build anything even remotely large, you pretty much have to babysit them. Now that alone is tedious enough, but the worst part is when you realize your build is off by just a few pixels, forcing you to either improvise best case, or redo the entire tedious building sequence worst case. Plus, sometimes, given how a particular level is designed, the solution may be to spam builders all in the same spot, which to me feels less like puzzle solving and more like brute forcing and having to solve a level in this way, it just never feels enjoyable to me to do that. My second issue ties in with that, in that single pixels can actually make or break your progress through a puzzle. Having to be so incredibly pixel accurate with some of the puzzles is just insane, and quite often when you make a mistake, you end up redoing the entire thing. I know this doesn't bother some people, but it really bothers me when I know the solution to a puzzle, but I can't execute it because I accidentally didn't click on something at the extraordinarily precise location I needed to. The last thing which bugs me when I try to play this game is just the evil level design in general. And part of the reason this game came to exist is because the designers were trying to come up with all kinds of creative and animated ways of killing these tiny little pixel creatures. So a number of the levels have traps in them which aren't even obviously traps until one of your lemmings gets killed by it, which then forces you to completely rethink how you're going to win the level because quite often you already have a plan going when these traps are sprung, meaning backtracking and performing a different plan may not be an option. Sometimes it will be, but it still comes off to me as dumb to have a puzzle game where you have to solve the puzzle multiple times because certain things necessary to solve the puzzle correctly aren't revealed until after you try other solutions. It'd be like trying to solve a maze with two possible routes, and when you're almost at the exit along one route, a wall suddenly appears which wasn't there before, and now the only way to solve the maze is to take the other route. 
This reduces the fun factor, and I think Lemmings would be a lot more fun if the traps were made more obvious, because at least then the player is simply experimenting when trying to send the lemming through one. Overall, I personally am not a fan of Lemmings games, but I completely understand why many people are. There's a ton of gameplay here, and while it's all very basic at its core, and sometimes a bit repetitious and mean-spirited, there's a certain charm in being able to watch hordes of these little guys walk their way to success or failure. Well, sure, it's completely based on an extraordinarily flawed misconception of real lemmings committing suicide en masse, but that's also a part of the draw of this game, is that it's a puzzle game which can bring up a strange array of emotions depending on how you empathize with these critters. Some of you may feel mortally responsible when one perishes, and some of you may have this logical approach of how some must die so the rest may be saved, or some of you just may get a maniacal kick out of having them plunge into pits of fire or getting smashed by ceiling crushers. It's ultimately a puzzle game though, so unless you already enjoy these kinds of games at least a little, then the Lemming series is probably not for you. Now, because of the way the palette is altered mid-frame in this game, this can result in palette corruption or other strange effects when run in emulators, and is most consistently seen with the pre-level screen which shows the level map and the stats of the level. You can indeed fix this by setting DOSBox's machine type to VGA only. But this has the side effect of disabling support for running DOSBox through OpenGL. And since DirectDraw support doesn't work on anything other than Windows 7 or earlier versions of Windows, you'll be stuck with surface level rendering, which not only may not look so great if you try to scale it to larger screen sizes, but may also have frame rate issues due to lacking any sort of hardware acceleration. So I actually recommend skipping on changing the machine type and just living with the strange palette effects. Beyond that, you need to set a fixed cycles count as the game's sound support will break if cycles is set too high. I recommend a setting of 7000 since it's around 9000 where the sound will sometimes work and sometimes not, so 7000 ensures it always works. Also when booting the game, you have to make sure you set it to run in either its high performance mode or IBM PS2 mode. If you run the Amstrad mode, the mouse support will be broken, and if you run the Compatibles mode, then you'll get palette issues in the gameplay itself, and the mouse cursor will be processed at a substantially reduced input rate. Anywho, that's all for today's episode of Ancient DOS Games. Episode 199 will be on Saturday, October 1st, and I'll be taking a look at a game which shares its name with a real pinball machine, even though the two games actually have very little in common. If you think you know of a game like that, then be sure to send your guests to adg at pixelships.com and stay tuned because there's not much left for this year. Thanks for watching everyone, and extra special thanks to those of you supporting me on Patreon. Here's just a small sample of you guys. Okay, there's one more thing I gotta show you guys here. Inside the manual, on the very first page here, well, technically page three, it says, Virus Warning. This product is guaranteed by Psygnosis to be virus-free. Psygnosis accepts no responsibility for damage caused to this product through virus infection. Please say page 20 of this manual for details. To avoid virus infection, always ensure that your machine is switched off for at least 30 seconds before trying to load this game. Do any of you have any idea how little sense that makes?